Today, I dedicate this video to my grandfather and namesake of my true name behind the name of Yoiston. He passed away recently and was an avid fan of Middle Earth and the Lord of the Rings Online. Love you, Papa. This one's for you. Today, we are talking about the lore and history of a man whose greatness fulfilled an oath and helped save the West. Theoden, King of Rohan. For more info, please check out the articles and videos in the description and cards. My friends, thank you all so much for being here. Let's begin our tale and journey back into Middle Earth. Theoden, an Old English translation of the Rohiric Turak, meaning king, was born in 2948 of the Third Age, in the land of Gondor, for indeed his father Thengo married Morwen Steelsheen of Larsenac, who within her had the blood of Numenor. Her Numenorean heritage would go into the line of Eorl, the line of kings, making her descendants taller than other Rohirrim, and some of them inherited her dark hair. Theoden would have one unnamed older sister, two unnamed younger sisters, and a youngest sister whose name was Theodwin. Theoden would spend around five years in Gondor, learning the tongues of Westron, and perhaps also some Sindarin before his grandfather Thangal passed away, and his father Thangal took the family back to Rohan's capital of Edoras, as Thangal came into his kingship. And of course Theoden would there learn Rohirric and the customs of his people, if he did not know some of these things already. However, it's important to note that he did have a connection to Gondor, the place of his birth, which would also be the place of his death. It is possible in his youth that Theoden met the man Thorongil, who he would see again later in his life, and would be inspired by him. When Theoden was 30 years old, his child and heir Theodred would be born, but Theoden would experience one of the many hardships in his life, and would lose his wife Elfhild in childbirth. And two years later, in 2980, Thangal would pass away, and Theoden would become the king of Rohan. He was a proud and good king at the young age of 32, and would act like the first marshal of the Mark, leading the muster of the Rohirrim at Edoras if the need came, but mostly an exercise and show. During his life, the shadow of Mordor grew once more, and orcs began to appear in Rohan. In 3002, Theoden's brother-in-law, Eomund, would be slain by such orcs, and shortly after, Theoden would pass away, leaving their two children, Eowyn and Eomer, orphaned. Theoden had loved his sister dearly, and that love also went to his niece and nephew, and so Theoden adopted them as his own children. But Theoden became, as it seemed, prematurely old in his days, and his health started to wane. But it would later be known that such ailments came to him by the spells of Saruman, once a friend now turned traitor to the king of Rohan, and his servant Grima Wormtongue, the chief advisor of Theoden. The proud and great king now felt a weakness, heedlessness, and inaction starting in 3014 of the Third Age. His kingdom relied more and more on his first, second, and third marshals, who were effectively, if not in name but deeds, Elfhelm Theodred and Eomer respectively. He also relied on Eowyn to take care of him. Even Gandalf the Grey, who was captured by Saruman in 3018 and went to Edoras, befriending the horse Shadowfax, the Lord of the Maras, would not be seen as a friend to Theoden. For Theoden told Gandalf to take a horse and be gone, but of all the horses in Edoras, Gandalf chose to tame Shadowfax, and Theoden saw this as a great insult. That horse would return riderless from the north, and Theoden, who was furious, was made glad at the lack of the rider. He would not even mourn the loss of Gandalf when he heard the news of his death, for he was not himself. Eventually, through the further advising of Wormtongue, Eomer was ordered not to hunt the orcs in the east and in the west at the first battle of the Forts of Isen on the 25th of February of 3019. Prince Theodred was slain by the forces of orcs, Uruks, and Dunlendings under the service of Saruman. Yet, Theoden remained broken by his ailments even after this happened, and Grima imprisoned Eomer in Edoras for breaking his ban on hunting orcs. Hope seemed lost for the Rohirrim, their doom imminent. But there were other forces at work in the world, and Gandalf, a true friend of the Rohirrim who never gave up on Theoden, returned from death. One of his first actions as Gandalf, the White, would be taking the three riders, friends from afar to Edoras, and through the power and hopeful words of Gandalf, he took Theoden forth from his dark hall and showed him that things were not so dark after all. His strength returned and he remembered Gandalf to be a true friend. And Theoden King brought justice upon Grima, who had misled and lied to him. Grima fled from Edoras to return to his master Saruman, and Theoden, who, even in his old age of 71, rallied his folk, spurred on by Gandalf and the Three Hunters. 
He took up the sword laid at his feet by his nephew, now freed, before calling on Hama, his door ward, to retrieve his own sword, Herugrim. Theoden would bear his blade into battle against Isengard after feasting with his people and giving gifts to his new friends, so that he might avenge and perhaps even save his people. And so, with many friends and allies, old and new alike, Theoden set forth from Edoras to meet the forces of Isengard, who slew his son on the open field, and the tall, old king with long, thick, braided white hair continued to inspire and lead his people, riding his steed Snowmane, who may have been one of the Meras. Before he left, however, Theoden commanded Eowyn, his niece, to take his people to Dunharrow, in the mountains behind Edoras for safety. Thus the riders came over the plains, until they encountered a scout who spoke of the fall of the fords during a second battle, and of the armies of Isengard. This scout was inspired to see the king riding forth once more, for he had not expected it at all. Gandalf told the king and his force to make for Helm's Deep, and the wizard rode to seek Urkenbrand and the Ents. Theoden did as he was advised, and made for the fortress of the Hornburg, and there he would lead his folk through the dark night of March 3rd, and though he nearly despaired at the overwhelming force against him, questioning the wisdom of Gandalf, Aragorn, who had once aided the Rohirrim as Thorongil, was there to aid him, and together with Theoden's guard, they rode forth and clove a path through the orcs, until at last the forces of Urkenbrand, the master of Helm's Deep, arrived, and the battle was won. Theoden would afterwards have a sleep greater than the others he had known for years. He would mourn the death of Hama, his door ward, and so many others, remembering these ills done to him when at last he would meet with Saruman. And so Theoden went with Gandalf and the others from Helm's Deep to Isengard for such a meeting. Theoden, who had led his folk to victory during the Battle of Helm's Deep, was now known as Theoden Ednu, meaning the Renewed, for he had cast off the yoke of Saruman. During the ride, Theoden would be amazed to learn the truth of the Ents, beings he thought to be creatures of childhood tales, and that they had come to his kingdom's aid in their hour of need. Later on that ride, Theoden would meet the hobbits Merry and Pippin at Isengard, and would be fascinated by them, wondering about their origins as the ancestors of the Rohirrim had tales of hole dwellers called Holbitnun. Theoden also wanted to speak to them about their herb lore in his house of the Golden Hall of Meadowseld in Edoras, if they ever got the chance. They would go forth and speak to Saruman and his lackey Wormtongue, the traitor, and Theoden, a man of strength, nobility, and greatness, but also a man who had suffered much loss and was susceptible to kind-seeming words, heard the voice of Saruman. And in the end, the man of greatness, who despite his losses remained mighty and wise, rejected Saruman's plea for false friendship, and he remembered the loss of Hama, his door ward. He called himself the son of lesser sires, and heard the insults of Saruman, who mockingly called him Horsemaster. But Theoden still had yet to see just how valiant of a man he himself truly was. After this conversation with Saruman, Theoden would journey back with his men towards the Hornburg, welcoming the aid of the Grey Company and understanding the fate of Aragorn lay elsewhere than with his men. But he looked to marry the hobbit whose friends had left him, and Theoden, who was kindly indeed, spoke to Merry and befriended the hobbit in the Hornburg, accepting the hobbit's offer of service. For Merry, Theoden would be as a father, only for a little while, as the king knew his time was coming. Thus he led his men through a path in the mountains towards Dunharrow, and when Eomer recommended to Theoden to wait out the rest of the war in Edoras, the king would reject this wanting not to sit in his halls, but to aid in the victory of the West over the Shadow, no matter the cost. And so it was that, when Theoden was reunited with Eowyn in Dunharrow, Hirgon, a messenger from Gondor, bore the red arrow from Stuart Denethor, calling upon Rohan's aid against the forces of Mordor. Theoden faced a great doom, and he would rise to meet it, answering the oath of Eorl to Kirion from hundreds of years before. He promised 6,000 riders for Minas Tirith in one week's time, and they set off the next day. Theoden ordered Eowyn and his esquire Merry to remain behind in Edoras, but they would not. They loved him and the country of Rohan, and would ride to battle also. Coming close to Minas Tirith from the north, the Rohirrim found that many orcs who had taken Kyr Andros blocked the path, and they would come to the Pelennor Fields too late if they took that path and engaged the orcs. But the Druidine, the Woeses of the Forest of North Anorian, made an agreement with Theoden to lead the Rohirrim by secret paths 
through the forest to come to Minas Tirith in time. Thus Theoden and his folk came, and the sight of the city burning weighed heavily upon Theoden. The horror and dread of death must have been overcoming the king, and Mary wondered if Theoden would turn away. Again, Theoden had lost much. This was not his kingdom. But it was his country also. He was born in Gondor. And regardless of that fact, Gondor was an ally, a land of good and free people. Theoden heard the hammer of doom fall upon the city as Grond broke the gate, and then there was no more doubt, no more fear. The winds of change came over the king, and he sat up upon Snowmane, proud and tall. He cried forth his renowned speech, inspiring his riders, and taking the horn of his banner bearer, he blew such a blast on it that it broke asunder. His men were with him, and Theoden King rode forth into the tales of legend upon the fields of Pelennor. He rode forth like the god Arome, as the strength of his ancestors filled him with fury. Theoden Ednu broke the lines of Mordor with his thousands of riders, and he came to battle with a chieftain of the Haradrim, whose standard bore a black serpent, and Theoden had the mastery, beating that foe in the field. The king of Rohan called his men to him, but his hour had come. He embraced it. A black dread on wings of terror overtook him, and the witch king came to Theoden, as Snowmane took an arrow and fell from the fear, crushing Theoden beneath him. But before the witch king could have the king, Eowyn, who had never left her uncle's side, was there, and in her mighty wrath the shield maiden of Rohan, with aid from Mary who did not abandon his friend and king, killed the witch king and avenged Theoden. Mary would kiss Theoden's hand and ask for forgiveness, and the king would give him grace, bidding the whole bitla farewell, telling him to think of him whenever he smoked his pipe. Theoden called for Eomer and hailed him, the new king of the Mark, wishing him glory and asking him to bid Eowyn farewell, not knowing it was her who had saved him, she who was near at hand. Theoden was glad that he at least felled the Black Serpent and could rest well with that fact. Thus, having said his goodbyes to those he had treated as sons, but not having the chance to say farewell to the one who was dearer to him than daughter. Theoden King departed this Middle-earth, going to the halls of his fathers, in whose mighty company he now felt no shame. Indeed, Theoden must have sat with the greatest of the second-born children of Iluvatar, Baron, Elros, Elendil, Eorl the Young, and his own son, Prince Theodred, and many others. For Theoden not only restored the glory of Rohan and fulfilled the oath of Eorl, but he overcame the darkness and losses within himself, when he had every reason to falter before such things. And so the body of Theoden was brought to be laid in state in the Tower of Ecthelion, being guarded by twelve guards, both of Gondor and Rohan, with twelve torches, a sheet of gold with green and white hangings on the bed. His unsheathed sword lay on the golden sheet, and his shield was at his feet. He earned his glorious rest. His body would later be taken to the hallows of Minas Tirith, and Aragorn, when he was king, offered Eomer king that he could remain there after they had won the war. But rather Eomer rode north and made preparations for Theoden's funeral in Rohan. And when the time came in early August of 3019, a mighty procession of peoples of all races, perhaps greater than the procession of any king before or after, rode from Minas Tirith to Edoras, just as a young Theoden came from Gondor to Rohan. And on August 10th, Theoden was at last buried outside of Edoras with his forefathers, and white Evermind grew ever on the mound above his stony tomb. The people of Rohan mourned him, and his riders sang a song about him made by his minstrel Gleowine. Thus that direct line of the kings of Rohan was ended, and his nephew Eomer became the next king of Rohan fully, remembering for the rest of his life the tale of Theoden the Renewed. And so we come to the end of our tale about Theoden. From the story of Theoden, we see that, no matter what darkness we face, we may still do great deeds nonetheless, and face down our fears with courage and love in our hearts. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed this episode on Theoden King. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. What are your thoughts, questions, additions, and corrections on the history of Theoden? Let me know in the comments below. Theoden is such an amazing character, and his compassion and leadership are always so inspiring. 
Thanks to our Valor Tier patrons, Adrian De La Torre, Chris Ortner, Kyle Wetzel, Peter Shepard, Jonathan Putin, and Mark Kralik, Blair Scouten, Merton, John Hume, Jennifer Wood, Sam McBee, Matt Sabach, Quantum Catalyst, Elizabeth Calvert, Maz Gibbs, Ben Gardner, Kondar, and Reese Jenkins, and Adam Petrolik, our newest Valor Tier patron. Thank you so much, and thanks to all of our patrons. It really means a lot. Please subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today. And I'll see you all again next week with a video on the nameless things and theories about them, just in time for Halloween. My friends, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one.